we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to introduce myself first. I'm Lena Sonier, the Senior Marketing Manager with Pixelot North America. And today we're really excited to bring you guys this webinar on how you can leverage video at your facility. Uh, we'll be learning from our expert panels on how they create rev new revenue streams, attract more leagues and clubs, and increase fan engagement. Um, so I'm the moderator. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A below or the chat and I'll interrupt when I can from these guys and I'll go ahead and ask the question. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Stephen Hamilton, who is our multi-sport venue guru and director of sales of Pixelot. Thanks everyone for joining today. I'd also like to thank our panelists and I'll do a quick introduction for them. And then we'll do a, a, a quick high level overview of Pixelot and our technology, and then pass it over to Chuck, Paul and Toby to talk a little bit about you know, their use cases with Pixelot in their facilities and their organizations a little bit more in depth to kind of share some more information. I think that'll be useful for this audience. Uh, and then we'll also, to Lena's point, have a Q&A. So let me just first, first start with Chuck. Chuck Stollery is the membership director for U.S. Indoor. Uh, U.S. Indoor is the association that serves the interests of uh, multi-sport venues, facility operators, as well as startups. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, as well as providers like ourselves. And so Chuck's organization uh, provides a lot of resources and best practices for facility uh, owner operators to be really successful and to maximize their properties. Um, Paul Druin is the president of IKS Media Group. He's located up in Saskatchewan in Canada. And so Paul has a diverse group, a company that does a lot of different things, including live sports productions with traditional production, as well as he helps, he's got a number of Pixelot systems in different venues that he's using to populate uh, an OTT platform that he's uh, built out with us. And he also does a lot of digital media fixtures in different venues and, and point of sales um, opportunities. And then finally, we've got Tony Grubbs, not least but not, and not last, uh, Tony Grubbs uh, with Upside Sports Complex uh, out of Alvin, Texas. Um, Upside is a 30,000 square foot complex with three uh, basketball courts. They also host volleyball and pickleball is the main two other sports, I think, and also have a fitness center. Uh, in addition, they have three of our systems as well as the OTT platform. In addition, he's also the founder of WePro Solutions, which is a customer software engineering and web design and marketing company with over 20 years experience. So I think we have a really diverse group here today and we're looking forward to this conversation. Uh, start with a little bit of background on Pixelot. So Pixelot was founded in 2013, um, and we have over 20,000 systems in the marketplace, and we're producing over 250,000 sporting events per month. And so we really are leading this kind of digital transformation in sports. And our main goal is to help democratize the ability for organizations, whether they be venues, leagues, or teams, to be able to produce high-level con uh, content with our automated systems and to be able to distribute those um, and we're really a 360 degree solution. So we can help you from a, a production standpoint, as well as a monetization, as well as if you have coaching analytic needs, we can support those as well. These are our most common, the most popular camera systems. These are our S1 on the right and our S2 on the left. They both work for indoor and outdoor sports. And we actually have algorithms uh, for 17 different sports. So. Uh, as I'll show you as we walk through the presentation, uh, essentially you would install this camera at mid-court, mid-field. It's connected to a what we call our video processing unit, and that's where we are, are going to apply the algorithms and produce and stream out your content for you. Um, so we'll kind of get into how it works, show you a couple examples of the video. So I will point out there's actually no moving parts in the cameras. Um, so what you can see here, the first thing the technology does is we capture the four different or two different videos. And then we stitch them together to create a full court, full field, panoramic view of the playing surface. And then once we have that, we are able to go ahead and apply the unique algorithm for that sport. So here on the left, we're using basketball as an example, and we're visualizing this algorithm. So you can see we can identify who has the ball, who's in the play, and who's not in the play. And so that algorithm is going to act like the camera operator. So this other video on the right that's going to start, this is again showing you using basketball the panoramic view of the court, and then this will transition to the auto production, that broadcast video that you'd be able to stream out of your venue or your facility. And so this is just an example 
of, uh, of a basketball game. And I'll point out a few things. I've got it muted here, but there's actually a, a microphone on the camera head unit so we can pick up the ambient sound. You can also uh, integrate play-by-play commentary. And then you can see we can also integrate the scoreboard data. So you get a high level production. And the beauty of the automated system is obviously it's gonna be more cost uh, uh, effective as well as gonna reduce the workflow. So you don't need any operators. You schedule the events in advance and the camera system is gonna come on and be able to stream out the content, produce and stream out the content from your venue. And then just a, a few things in terms of, uh, you know, Pixelot. Like I mentioned, we are a 360 degree solution. So we're gonna help you do a few things. One, we're gonna capture and stream out all that content. You'll also be able to use that content for marketing purposes. We also have different tools for your fan engagement where they would also be able to you know, create clips and highlights and share those on their social media platforms. So really helping you to kind of get the word out about your facility and your event. And then with our OTT system, which I'll talk about in a second, we have a white label solution that would allow you to monetize your content through subscriptions, pay-per-view, advertising integrations, all of that. And then, as I mentioned before, if you're working with specific teams and leagues, depending on their level, and they want uh, that coaching player analysis perspective, we also have that covered with our big swap coaching analytics platform. So those are a couple of things I just want to kind of highlight. And then this is an example here of, you know, on the mobile app of our OTT platform. So the OTT consists of a website that's going to host your content, as well as applications for Android and iOS that you can take advantage of and be able to you know, sell subscriptions or, or uh, things of that nature, integrate advertising and sponsorship. So wanted to kind of give that a uh, quick overview of Pixelot. And then I'll just leave this up here for a second. If anyone wants to see further, um, this QR code will lead you to uh, a link that you can schedule um, an opportunity to speak more in depth about the technology if you have any questions specific to your venues and your use case. Uh, but with that, I'll start with uh, Chuck with the U.S. Indoor. If you may want to talk, talk a little bit about you know, your organization um, and some of the, the members that you serve, uh, as well as maybe your experience with, with Pixelot. So uh, we are a sponsor of U.S. Indoor, and we've had a, a good relationship here the last, last couple of years. So we really appreciate your support on this, Chuck, for organizing this. So U.S. Indoor represents the, the trade organization for for-profit indoor sports facilities in the U.S. and Canada. So they range from everything. I think our smallest member is 6,000 square feet, and our largest member right now is 285,000 square feet. So it, it it's got a wide range, various different formats, some you know large format tournament type facilities, some smaller format local type facilities and so there this type of technology i think could serve both and fill um a spot that could be a value add that would attract some like youth clubs and stuff to the building where they might choose to play at a building that has this this type of feature so they could get film of their games and their players while they're playing in the building versus another facility that does not have that so uh I have I have a couple of questions for you, Stephen, um, and for the other people on the panel. What have you seen from the local programming side? What kind of use cases have you seen, both in value add and in revenue generation, from say a one or two field or one or two or three court facility? So first of all, a little bit of background: we're we're not uh, we're an integrator, so we integrate equipment for facilities all across Canada. We build uh, large scale scoreboards, we build broadcast studios, and really fell in a pixelot um, kind of by accident, because as a traditional broadcaster, we're not looking for a one-stop solution. We're, we're trying to deliver a product at the end of the day. So um, we started the journey with them uh, going back in 2019. And the first thing that we realized is the, the marketing side of what they have addressed a couple of things right away. Um, teams that we, we work with uh, 30, 32 different sports organizations that use the facilities that currently have cameras that we are their partners in, uh, that we have marketing agreements with or, or are the existing, I would say the in-venue production team for. So what, what we found first and foremost out of the block on the monetization side was um, being able to sell pre-roll and mid-roll, which we started off with, with uh, Pixelot. And 
what the primary concern was, and if you talk about monetization when you're talking to our facilities, was how are you going to let people know what is the adoption time? And that came from some of the civic people that we work with. And that'll be the first question is how long can we see a return on our investment? What we decided to do is rely less on the subscription side, going to a free period to kick off the sort of the season and then going to the local market and, and proving out to be quite successful in delivering sponsors that would help us offset literally all the cost, all the monthly costs for having the pixel lot system running while we had somebody concentrating on, on marketing the subscriptions. And that was, um, and that really happened two ways. Um, it happened by engaging in our, in our case, uh, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan Junior Hockey League and talking to them about who are their likely advertisers who would want to see the product outside of the province and targeting them, guys who would buy ring boards, by the way, are perfect customers to buy Pixelot ads. They, they literally paved the way for us to do, to do more with this. Um, interesting thing about the sponsorship side is that they usually come on and stay on with us as a, um, as a play sponsor, whether that's in the corner up in the side where we've got their logo or in a score bar or in the pre-roll. And they've actually stayed with us. Uh, some of them have wanted to remain part of the program when we relocate because unlike maybe Chuck's group or uh, Toby, I, I know about the upside sport facility, amazing spot to go and uh, play basketball, um, was that our buildings go dark. So the perfect example is this summer, we were able to relocate our S2. We have a series of S2s and S1s, and we were able to relocate it to a baseball field and create a whole bunch of other customers literally in about a four day period. So the, the portability of the system and being an integrator was pretty easy for us to move it. But I think you don't wanna get, if you wanna see what it really can do, if the facility is not working, then you can repurpose it. And I will give you the ultimate example of that. Um, we used our OTT and cameras to do Highland dancing competitions uh, a few weeks ago, uh, sold almost $9,000 worth of subscriptions in a three day period. And we're really happy with how it all worked. We we're hugely successful with that. I never knew that many people would sign up to watch Highland dancing. Uh, and it only needs <laughs> one camera shot, right? Yeah. So we were able to deliver uh, continuous programming over four days. Um, and people went, we want to see more on the OTT. Um, the app for us, um, honestly, I mean, we've dealt with Ben and, and Stephen for quite some time. And um, what's been good for us is been the response from guys like Ben willing to at least go along for the, I would call it the technical joy ride that is my technical development team. So they were able to create other opportunities to use secondary cameras, apply broadcast technology. So because I'm a traditional broadcaster, I want it to be more. Um, we're gonna, I mean, there's more cool stuff coming down the road, but the OTT was able to deliver something like 1100 hours of Highland dancing. Can't go wrong, right? So repurposing the camera. And then also the other thing for us is, is leveraging, this is the big thing for us going into the fall. If you wanna talk about monetization, um, we have a lot of parents in hockey who think they can call games or be color or at least provide openings. and. We're taking our, v, our VPUs and we're putting a kit together, a uh, couple of headsets, we're plugging them in and we're saying, telling them when the feed goes live. And we've got a lot of junior broadcasters that are coming along because what they're really good at, lesson that we learned in producing Pro Rodeo for the last 10 years was sponsor reel. They're great about acknowledging everybody, right? So we want to thank OK Tire. We want to thank, you know, SaskTel, SGI. And they, what we've done is we've clipped those pieces and we've sent them to the sponsors. So we use the clipping function to send that on to guys that would want to see validation of their social media activation, sure, activation, sure. sorry. So, I mean, those are two ways that, you know, audio will be big for us going into the fall. Uh, we're doing baseball finals right now with our cameras and they'll all be repurposed in two weeks for the pucks dropping in our, in our facilities on September 9th. And um, we'll continue to leverage all the automated stuff we can. So. Maybe that's a little bit more than you wanted, Stephen. But no, that's all right. <laughs> and yeah. Toby, for you, I mean, you've got three courts, right? We were talking just before, just three basketball courts. How are you using the system, and and how do you think it would apply to facilities like yours? Paul will listen to more of what Paul had to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested in that side. Well, he just mentioned something about the dancing. Uh, we had a school event a while back. I say a while back, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that they came in and they wanted a lockdown, but they wanted it video. 
So we didn't know what to do. And so of course we use picks a lot. And like he said, we made a lot of money. I'm, I'm, I'm not as good as Paul. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not saying how much we made, but we made good money uh, on doing just what he said, repurposing the cameras, not just for basketball or volleyball, but in this, it was weird. I don't even know how else to say it, but it, it worked out well, not only for the kids, but their parents were able to watch and see what's going on. They could even hear what was going on. So uh, I thought I thought from a security point, that was really nice too uh, for the parents, but uh, it also drew, drove in revenue. But we use the app, the OTT app platform. Uh, I'm on it all the time. Uh, we have tournaments in here every weekend uh, that we use, people subscribe. We have weekend passes, we have annual passes, we have season passes, uh, but we're leaning towards the bid swap and I'm trying to get into with the coaches because that's what we're trying to sell to now, our coaches. Uh, talking to coaches about the analytics, the monetization, all that good stuff. The other stuff that I want to talk to Paul about <laughs> that I think he knows what I'm talking about. Uh, you do too. But uh, that's essentially how we use it. Uh, all basketball and volleyball. Are you, are you calling your games? Are you putting like guys to call the basketball games? No, I wish we did because I mean, you, what you just hit on, I'm, I, all these sparks were going off in my head. Now we do sponsorships and we do stuff like that, but we do not do what you're talking about. But I love what you're saying. You know, they, here's what I know from, from being a traditional broadcaster. I was a traditional broadcaster for 13 years. Now I'm an executive producer, you know, of a couple, three different shows. One of the things I, I've noticed, especially when we've done it with audio, we've added a couple of people in. We get more people signing up and staying and watching. Like one of the things that uh, that activates social media, and we're going to be running this for the, the, the AAA Warriors in our hockey facility this fall, is that we've got a couple of parents. They're going to call the games. Like they're going to, like it, we're going to, mom is going to do intros. And, and it's kind of campy. But at the end of the day, when those clips are shared, they're reshared more than the clips of the game. That's the thing that I found really interesting is it's much more, and especially with basketball, you got to be able to talk basketball. Hockey will kind of run itself. You can kind of follow along, but there's so much intricacy to basketball. Um, and, it, and I'll give you a perfect example. I'm involved with a, uh, an organization called Rimpage. It's the ultimate one-on-one. -on -one. I think you've probably talked to him, Patrick from Rimpage. It's the yeah. ultimate one-on-one -on -one competition that he's running started in Las Vegas. And I can tell you the commentary that goes with the one-on-one -on -one stuff, unbelievable, right? And we just built them a small rack rig, gave them two headsets, turned it on. When you see it turn on your phone, you guys are on. And they, they go. And they're sponsored by Monster, right? So every couple of minutes, you'll hear a shameless Monster plug. And that's, you know, that's really great to see it. And, and we get feedback more. We get activation from the social media people that are following the Monster brand. So we'll get something back from Monster saying, hey, thanks for the big shout out during your tournament. Um, you know, how else can Monster help you? Pay for my camera, pay for my commentators. Because um, at the end of the day, the baseline entertainment is yeah. fine. Um, but Highland Dancing, there was commentary for 20, I don't know how many hours. I think we did 26, 27 hours, including practices. There was a commentator every step of the way, right? And people were glued to it. And it was one shot. Imagine if we would have had more and then and leveraged the OTT even more. That's an awesome story. I, I, I'm going to keep that one in my head for a while. <laughs> hey, I'm glad even the panelists are learning stuff from each other. This is sort of the whole idea is to share everyone's ideas and uh, get new ones and then go forward and see how, you know, yeah. you can leverage the video to yeah. help your facility. Yeah, I'm learning. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm going to keep Paul in my, in my head here. <laughs> I'll set you up with Patrick from Rimpage. We're going to come down to your facility and do something. Oh. Um, the, the, uh, so the, the other part of the, the real in time graphics, um, which we saw from Liger today and, and, and Stephen will talk about, that's kind of like the holy grail for us to deliver on um, real time, real time pop ups. The, the people that are um, used to the conversation, like I, I had a, a good conversation with an executive producer for CBC Sports just the other day. And he said, what you need to do with what you're doing here, Paul, is you need to, to fox the size what Pixelot's doing. And I'm like, fox the size? He says, yeah, Fox Sports. You remember the blue hockey puck? Do you remember the, the touchdown, you know, 
like this guy goes back that far with Fox and had experience working with them. And he said, it's, it, you only need about 15% of wow to get a, a bet twice the return. So I'm like, well, how, okay, help me, help me get there. He said, well, the 10 yard line marker, let's just say if we were to be able to find a way to do that in, in Pixelot when we were shooting it, could be sponsored. It, it creates opportunity for us to do overlay, you know, something like VizArt or OBS can do all these other cool things and not go broke doing it. So whatever they've got coming has to be based on almost that. And I think Chuck would agree that if, if we had something that, and it will come, that, it, that gave us that moment to on-field on field ads, Stephen, on-field yeah. ads, we want them. Yeah. So with Chuck, no, so yeah, with I'm sure sure. Yeah, let me Yeah, let me jump in here, Paul. So I think there's just a, a, a few things. So obviously with the, you know, the, the base system, if you will, with Pixlot, we can integrate the scoreboard data, we can yeah. have your sponsor logos that you're doing now in the corners, um, and you can do some other things in terms of pre-rolls and mid-rolls uh, within the video, which I think a lot of, not just yourselves, but others are taking advantage of. And then I think Toby was mentioning the, the different types of subscriptions that they do, whether it be a day pass, a season pass, monthly passes, depending on how the, the leagues are organized. Um, and what Paul is saying is that we do have some integrations with, with some other technology partners, Liger being one of them, which is, is great promotion for them here but they can help us do even more advanced graphics based on um, basically event data that they can integrate with. So that's kind of like high level. And Paul works with, not only does he have youth hockey and youth basketball, but he also gets into some of the, the minor leagues up in Canada that are looking to do some additional uh, broadcast elements, which is uh, an awesome opportunity for all of us. Um, so yeah, I think that's, uh, th there's a good jumping off point, Paul. And, Kind of showing you the innovation that continues with Pixelot and, and our systems as we continue to, to grow. But uh, maybe I'll kick it off, Chuck, if you don't mind, I may ask Toby, um, you know, in terms of your facility, can you maybe talk a little bit about the, the content? And I know, I think you were mentioning the other day that you're also using it uh, a lot from a marketing standpoint. Um, are you doing different things with the, you know, the taking highlights and things of that nature and, and, and helping market your facility and your events? I do do a lot of social media with it, uh, do a lot of clipping. What we did learn recently, you know what I'm talking about, is that downloading the full video uh, was, was an issue. So we fixed that. Uh, we changed our website, changed the verbiage on our website, and now we offer a special package that if you want full videos, there's, a, there's an extra cost, obviously, but we'll be happy to provide. Yep. So, I mean, you, one thing I will say that I, I kind of stuttered on there, because something that Paul said was talking about y'all, your team, your support, Ben, you, you know, the two people that I keep here, Ben, you, your names, Ben, dude, I, I don't know. I call that guy, whatever he's, he reaches right back out. It surprises me. And I'm in the software world and I don't get that kind of support from other companies that don't call themselves a software company. So it surprises me and it, I'm very happy with the support. And that's why I continue, we, we've been with y'all for several years. Uh, yep. During the pandemic and during the pandemic, we made money. I mean, because nobody was coming to the gym, the, the players were coming, but people were subscribed to watch at home. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of pluses. This right here, I mean, I'm shocked that I'm learning something. I thought I knew everything, duh, I don't, uh, you know? <laughs> Uh, I'm very happy that y'all invited me to be on here because, I, like I said, I'm learning. Uh, but, but I, I, yeah, we have good use for the pixel lock cameras. I think you and I spoke about there's there's the ability to do like for a recreational team, say an adult recreational team playing every Tuesday night. You have the ability to do like a highlight reel for them at the end of the season. Is that is that something that yeah. you do too? Yeah, and the other thing about it is uh, pixel lock does it on its own. I mean, if you let it, it'll do its own highlight. Well, I think yeah, which I think, I mean, from if I was still playing, I'm retired, but if I if I was still playing, it would be a cool thing to to be able to, you know, have the team out at the at the bar for a beer and pop the highlight reel in yeah. and, well, yeah, and and be able all, to watch that. I mean, that seems your, pretty cool. Yeah, you can do your own highlight clips and your own reels and all of that stuff. And that, that's the I guess the biggest thing we do here is education. We educate them because they don't know what these cameras are capable of doing until we show them. And once they see that, you know, they light up. I was at a tech conference about three months ago in Las Vegas. I was talking about this gym and 
for some reason I brought up Pixelot and the whole dang room lit up. Everybody knew Pixelot in Las Vegas. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, nobody, everybody was all excited. And you, know, you have Pixelot cameras in your gym? I'm like, yeah. And they, they were very thrilled. I say that around here, people don't know what I'm talking about. So, so I think here for Houston, it's, it's an education type of thing for us. To, to your point, we're not, you know, you were at a trade show, um, so we're not going to go necessarily the, the consumer brand, although we're moving into that direction, if you will. Uh, we've got a couple of products that are more geared towards individuals and teams. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the fixed systems that we're talking about with the show, the automated production, the live streaming, those enhanced uh, broadcast elements, as well as those automatic highlights that we were just talking about. Those are all, you know, we are kind of, you know, more of the B2B solution. We do have some questions and this was, you know, it, pretty good. You were talking about uh, Stephen and, and this mysterious Ben. Uh, do, do you train facilities on how to sell the system or do you have some type of template, et cetera? To, to your point, yes. I think one, we do pride ourselves on our support uh, in terms of, you know, educating the, whether it's in Toby's case of the, the venue operator, how to utilize the system and then how to take advantage of like the OTT platform to monetize the content through those subscriptions, as well as the sponsor slash advertising component. So we do that. And then it's really working with uh, the organizations to help uh, them market it. And, you know, you and Toby, they have databases, they know who their clients are, they know who's coming through the facility. And it's about promoting uh, the availability of the, the videos that they can, you know, purchase access to. And I think that's the biggest thing is you know, whether it's in venue or through digital marketing, social marketing, all of those different touch points that you have with your clientele that come through the venue really helps you be successful. And so when you're working with, you know, uh, third party tournament organizers, I think there's, you, you know, depending on your relationship with those entities, you really want to make sure that, you know, one that you, you know, you have some exclusivity in terms of the video that's, I think, important uh, from a practical standpoint and that they help promote uh, the, the opportunity for all those players and families and those that can attend to be able to ac access the video. Toby, anything on your perspective? Yeah. No, I was, I, yeah, I just agree with what you just said <laughs> because you and I have talked a lot and Ben and I have talked a lot over the years about I think we all think the light when it comes to that. So, I mean, and we utilize social media. You know that we utilize yeah. that. I'm passing. Paul, anything from your use case? Was that a question to me? I'm sorry. Lena, any other questions? We did. You, we did have one about flag football, but I saw you type that, Stephen. We do do flag football. Yeah. Uh, very excited about some of our uh, uh, stuff coming up about that. Um, do you have the replay capabilities in uh, broadcast portion? I'm assuming so that means re replay during a stream. Yeah, so um, a couple of different things. If you wanted to do, and, and Paul's got some experience with this, um, you could take the automated pixel lot video out into like another mixer if you needed to, to kind of do replays or and, and or add additional angles. Um, that's more for the high level uh, productions, but then it'd be semi-automated. Um, and then just Paul also mentioned earlier that Liger integration. So depending on the data accessible, they can do what they call highlights. So if there's a goal in hockey uh, and the data is coming into the Liger system, it can do a replay of that goal. It can also tie in a sponsor to it. But those are kind of, you know, uh, maybe some higher level uh, productions um, in the app or when you're watching the game, you have the ability to scrub back. So if I'm a fan watching my son or daughter play, I can scrub backwards and, and rewind and be able to not only watch that video, but in our OTT, you can actually clip it out and save that moment in your account. Yep. You have another option there, Stephen, is when we were doing... Um, hockey when we and I, you and I first got going. One of the things that yep. we use, Toby, is we uh, we equipped a couple of um, our guys with uh, vMix laptops. So we got a copy of yep. vMix, uh, stuck it on a laptop. We took the output of the camera, captured it like so Steven's camera. We took the output of the camera by adding an SDI capture card on the VPU. And then just a small mag well, sucked it right into the laptop. 
yeah. and then we streamed right from the laptop right back to uh, the Pixel Auto TT. So we were coming yeah. out, creating an RTMP feed, and they were going right back out to our OTT. And then um, Ben was able to create, at one point we had, I think, five RTMP servers created. So we were chunking back. So the games, I would call them games of the week, would be like a, a vMix type one. So you would see a guy with a laptop, a couple of headsets. So let's say you had a big tournament. Uh, vMix would let you do, basic vMix will let you do replay. It'll let you scrub back in the play while you're not losing your real time capture. So that's the way yeah. that we found that we could at least do it. Like I would call it laptop TV. So we could go out there with a box and a monitor and a couple of guys and, and really deliver something um, yeah. uh, pretty extraordinary. The other part of vMix lets you do is it, they have a product called vMix social. So you can, if people are watching, what we like to be able to do is get people to comment. So vMix social has an aggregate so they can be on Twitter, uh, they can look at Facebook, Instagram, a couple of other platforms and actually bring those comments right into and we can choose to bring them up. So if somebody's watching our, our game, like our Pixelot game, what I would call like laptop TV, we can bring in those comments and bring them in as a lower third in vMix. And the learning curve was really small, like very, very small for my guys. Yeah, and, and, and but I just wanna preface that, that Paul obviously is a, traditional broadcaster right so um <laughs> some of this might be a little bit intimidating for um some no, of the I'm not comments, intimidated, but, but I, I, I really would love to pick it right <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, that's I thought, the thing. I so we work with we work with obviously paul is one you see but we do work with obviously you know other production companies where they're taking you know they they're trying to reduce their workflow their costs so they're using uh the pixel on camera i think what paul was describing as camera a camera one and then taking it into something else, maybe supplementing it uh, to have a higher level broadcast. But I think for facilities that you know are part of Chuck's organization, um, and you know similar to what Toby has down there in Texas, you know, having the automated production allows you when you're scheduling, right, Toby? You probably have, you know, the three courts. You, you know, any afternoon you're doing, you know, probably you know 15, 20 games. You want to get those all out onto the platform so everyone 60, can enjoy them, right? 60 games. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't lend itself. It doesn't lend itself well to that, you know, the putting a guy there all the time. Um, but I can tell you like on the, like a sponsored weekend, how we've done our stuff in, in the past is we've, if a facility wants the camera in, we'll provide it and we'll tell them, here's the cost of having the camera in the facility for, let's say the three days. And we'll say that cost is $5,000. We'll, we'll send a guy out, we'll get the internet, we'll get it all working. But what we'll do is we'll send somebody into offset to add more to it, not another camera necessarily, but add more to the broadcast and then value add the subscription, right? Because people don't want to see the same thing. I can watch Major League Baseball and I can watch it all season. And then I can watch the playoffs where, you know, um, where we can really maximize picks a lot. Like the idea for us is just to make, to make it a little bit more entertaining, right? Uh, but Pixelot carries the ball 99% of the time. But when we want to go out and like what the conversation about today is maximizing return, well, there is that moment for us as operators and Chuck would have the same thing or you and your facility on those big tournament weekends, we can really actually raise our subscription value with a little bit of help and, and not a lot more gear, which is really at the end of the day, what we're all trying to do, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Awesome. Lena, another, so any other questions? Yeah, another question. Um, it, is it all streaming live? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in. So yeah, you obviously can stream live, but there's also the VOD component. So if you were not able to watch that game in real time, you would be able to go on to the OTT platform and be able to go back and watch that game. So I think that, that I, you know, I don't know the exact percentages and um, I'm not sure if anyone's really done some research, Toby, at like your facility, but there is obviously a lot of, you know, folks that go back and watch it on demand versus watching it live. There's a, you know, it's probably a little bit more slanted towards on demand than, than actually live to some extent. I think, I, I think you're, I agree with that statement. Yes, very much. That's what I see here. Because when I, you know, I want to go back and I had that massive dunk at Toby's facility, I want to go back and watch it and uh, share it with Chuck. So that's, that's why. <laughs> 
Chuck's retired. Remember, he's not playing anymore. Yeah, he's retired. Not yeah, retired, retired. I, I I'll still watch so a game. Just, uh, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another one is, uh, is baseball available with OTT? Earlier, it was just in development. Yeah, so um, we have a kind of a newer product called our uh, Pixelot Double Play, which consists of a camera located at home and another one at center field. Instead, of, so a little bit different than we were watching that basketball uh, video. Uh, the AI, is just, we're super excited about this, um, actually flips between the home, excuse me, the home plate and the center field camera to produce a multi-angle baseball production. And yes, the OTT uh, does work with that. We actually have uh, going on right now, uh, people might be familiar with a facility called Cooperstown um, All-Star Village right near the Hall of Fame. They have 13 uh, fields and they host tournaments every week. And they are currently using our systems to produce, I think this summer they'll do over 5,000 uh, baseball games and they are using the OTT and they are uh, wildly successful. They want, I want to say they're close to between 15 and 20% conversion rate in subscriptions uh, based on the number of players per team. So they're having a lot of success. And I know in talking to Toby, I think his numbers, at his facility was even a little bit higher than that. So that gives you maybe some data points to think of. And does the OTT allow um, embed game changer in the video feed? Embed so if like, um, so in Paul's case and in Toby's case, they'll have multiple um, games. So three courts uh, being streamed live at the same time, depending on the start times at, at Toby's facility, where Paul might have where he's got a couple hockey venues and a basketball venues for, you know, playing at the same time. All those games would be available on the OTT and you could select which game you want to watch primarily and you could toggle between them all. I think that's all the questions. If anybody has any others, just go ahead and type them in. Awesome, just replying to some <laughs> that I can type into. Um, awesome. Well, I'm Great. really excited that even our panelists have learned things from each other. And it's, uh, it's very exciting to hear how people are going ahead and taking just the, you know, all the, the work and everything of the Pixelot camera and making their productions that much better um, and, and coming up with ideas and everything to, you know, utilize the technology that, you know, the camera provides, but also being able to give things, you know, like we said, those highlight reels for those players. It's so important for me from the marketing standpoint, I, I absolutely love when people create highlight reels and share them online. I just wish they would tag Pixelot more so oh, I sure. wouldn't have to search so hard. So, you know, guys, Chuck, Paul, you know, Toby, uh, at Pixelot for me, please. Uh, so I can right. find your guys' highlights faster. <laughs> yeah, that's something that yeah. I've been doing and I didn't realize until the other day. So, yes. So, uh, appreciate everybody being here. Lena, thank you. Chuck, thank you so much for helping us put this together, organizing it, promoting it, and Obviously, Toby and, and Paul, uh, thanks for your continued support and, and being a part of this. Uh, we're looking forward to, one, you guys, uh, Cece and Lena on all your highlights, so she can uh, uh, add those to social media, and, and hopefully everyone will check out your site if they go to, um, to be able to watch some of your events moving forward. So thank you so much. If there's any other questions, I'll just put here one more time, if that's okay, uh, in case anyone wants to schedule an opportunity to talk to you more in depth. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Bye.